coalition members have come together at White Sands Missile Range this month to test the compatibility of their country's network and communication systems. Multinational Experiment 5 is bringing soldiers from the United States, Canada, Australia, and Great Britain together to conduct tests near White Sands Missile Range's Oro Grande Gate. Each country has brought its own communications and network systems or versions of new systems they are developing. Over the course of the experiment, coalition partners conducted simulated tactical operations to test the compatibility of each of their systems with each other. By connecting each of their systems together, it's hoped that the militaries involved will be able to better fight as a team and conduct more efficient operations in a future that's expected to see more multinational operations. Chief Staff of the Army says we fight as a coalition, we're going to train as a coalition, we're going to do that on a regular basis. One of the challenges and goals of the multinational experiment is to figure out how to make each country's respective equipment work together without the need for equipment exchanges or a middleman to relay the information. In the past, we would share information by giving our partners our same system. That's really not interoperability, that's simply allowing them to use our system. We're trying to establish information exchange so that our native mission command or battle command system can talk directly to their native battle command system and not have to exchange physical hardware. They can use their organic hardware, we use our organic hardware, and through exchange of data and, if you would, translation of that data from one system to the other system, we can all have a common operating picture. While standard voice communications are one of the capabilities being tested, navigation and tactical data sharing are also a large part of the test. The idea is to generate a common operating picture across the entire coalition. To this end, the systems that each country uses to track the position of their own forces and reported enemy forces are being linked together, allowing each country to see the location of allied forces and any reported enemies. A demonstration given October 18th showed the four countries were able to pass that information to each other, with colored and flagged icons making synchronized movements around each country's digital map display. These are sending out their blue dot information about every two minutes. So it might look a little bit clunky, like it's jumping a bit, but from what we've got at the moment, remember, previously we passed this information through those liaison officers via voice, typing it into our system, that's a lot slower. So this is a hundred times better than what we've currently got, and really, when you put that in terms of what it might mean to an operator, it could save lives. While through the use of liaison officers, allied forces have been able to roughly track each other's movements and operations, the systems being tested in the MNE are man-portable and vehicle-mounted systems intended for use by company-sized units. Changing the focus of this information stream means that valuable tactical information, like the location of friendly units and sighted enemies, is going directly to the soldiers on the ground. This capability has not really existed at the tactical level before, so for, you know, a com for one a Canadian company to see the location of a, an American company directly on their battle management system is, uh, is really a step forward. Passing this valuable tactical information to the combat soldiers in the field means they will be able to make better tactical decisions and also greatly reduces the risk of friendly fire between allied units. The experiment comes at a time when the Army is moving to an agile acquisition process a faster way of getting new equipment that's better suited to the modern soldier and modern information age battlefield. Our IT acquisition is taking too long. It's taking uh, up, upward of 10 years of getting new radio systems. So that's like if you bought a cell phone today and delivered it 10 years from now. How useful would that be? In this regard, the MNE is serving a purpose parallel to another simultaneous test. The network integration evaluation also taking place at White Sands. We are trying to achieve somewhat similar objectives. We're an NIE, we're trying to, to fill a capability gap that exists. And one capability gap that exists in all of our nations is our ability to have multinational interoperability. White Sands was chosen as the location for this test for several reasons. White Sands Missile Range's terrain, with its combination of deserts and mountains, has similar conditions to those found in places like Afghanistan. This is designed to replicate what we would face when we're deployed, say, to Afghanistan or some other harsh environment. So the equipment has been holding up in this dusty, uh, dry, uh, hot environment as it should. White Sands was chosen as the location for this test for several reasons. White Sands Missile Range's terrain, with its combination of deserts and mountains, has similar conditions to those found in places like Afghanistan. It's been uh, exciting, um, it's been a challenge, but it's also been successful.